The Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, greetings once again. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm so glad you could join us for this particular netcast. We're going to be continuing in Romans chapter 16. So if you are in a place where you can get your Bible and uh, have it available, I encourage you to get it so you can follow along in the Scripture. You know, it's important to get everything out of the Word of God, not just what somebody says, you know, it's me or another minister or whatever. It's not what an individual minister says. It's what does the Word of God say. The Word of God is our final and absolute determining factor when it comes to any doctrine, any teaching, anything that you may be hearing. It's vitally important that you only get it from the Word of God. Amen? Because there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of false teaching. There are a lot of people who their heart is right. They want to do the right thing. They're just saying the wrong thing. They're teaching the wrong thing. They're teaching men's traditions. They're teaching, in some cases, doctrines of devils. There's some people that are teaching things that are completely against the Word of God, and they're doing it in the name of the Lord, supposedly, and they're deceiving people. And we know that in the last of the last days, which is what I believe we're in, is the last of the last days, in these days, it's going to get worse. So you've got to be even more dedicated to the Word of God in an uncompromising manner. That's vitally important, all right? And, uh, you know, we, we, <laughs> we started off the program today kind of on a, on a deep note there, but it is a critical thing, and it, it came up, so praise the Lord. I'm, I go with it, praise the Lord. If the Holy Ghost is directing us in that direction, that's the way we're going we're gonna to go. But let me give you a few announcements first before we get into the Word of God. So that will give you a chance to find your Bible and, and turn it to Romans chapter 16. Um We've had a lot of things happening with Word of Faith Radio. Things are going strong there. We've got a lot of new people that have started. A lot of things happening there. Uh, Speakfaith.tv, we've had some exciting things as well. Uh, Speakfaith.tv, we have revamped the feed uh, for Mac Hammond's program. His, his uh, how can I put it, his feed of programs had gotten kind of stale because the ministry there, Mac Hammond Ministries, had switched over to a different location for their files, and we didn't know it at speakfaith.tv, so uh, we, we didn't get the memo, so to speak, and uh, it, it seemed to just stop. All of his programs just stopped. Well, they really didn't, but we didn't know. Uh, so uh, Mac Hammond Ministries contacted us and said they were hearing from some people who were saying, we're not getting updated programs. What's going on? And so they had us check into it and come to find out they, they had changed their uh, their feed. So we corrected that. We fixed our connection so that now we're getting uh, his latest programs. So two things there. One is uh, his latest programs are out there now. The other thing is we're extremely grateful that so many people are watching to the point that they even contacted the ministry and told them, hey, speakfaith.tv doesn't have the latest feed. I mean, that's kind of exciting that people are out there really watching, really paying attention, and letting folks know when something like that happens. So, you know, it was kind of kind of a bad thing, but also kind of a good thing. You know what I'm saying? Because we found out so many people are really excited about it. So that's really great. And Mac Hammond Ministries is very gracious and, and, and very kind uh, in letting us know. And it just worked together well as a, as a ministry team, so to speak, to get that little correction made. So that was just kind of exciting to me. I really enjoyed that. Uh, of course, we have all the updated uh, daily programs from Rick Renner Ministries, um, all kinds of news. Oh, oh yeah, another big news, other big news. You remember, it's been now months ago at this point, uh, we started a project to get the professional video equipment, and the, the vision was to put it at Faith and Victory Church and have that equipment there, and we were going to be purchasing it from uh, a church that was selling their, their equipment. 
And you remember how that went. And, and we made that available for folks to give toward. And it just didn't gel together. You know, it didn't happen. And so I said, well, we're just going to put it on the shelf. You know, we're going to pray, find out what the Lord would have us do about that. And we did. And then in a matter of just weeks after that, guess what? The Lord made it available to purchase that equipment and put it at Faith and Victory Church. Not through Word of Faith Ministries, not through our ministry, but through Faith and Victory. People started contributing. Oh, man, praise the Lord. It was exciting. And they were excited. And we are now using the professional video equipment and even purchased some additional equipment so that it would be full HD, high-quality, 1080p recording. Uh, of course, we're, we're putting it out at 720p, uh, for those of you that know these video terms, uh, so that it would be easier to download over the Internet. But still, it's really exciting what has come together. And now we're training people to run the cameras and, and the equipment, and there's just a lot of, a lot of things happening, a lot of uh, excitement there at Faith and Victory Church for that video equipment. So we got an upgrade on our camera here in our studio, and uh, Faith and Victory Church has all that equipment now that can be used for the glory of God. So, whoo, I tell you, it, isn't God good? Isn't that amazing how all that works together? And, uh, you know, we, we saw a need, we saw a possibility there, but then the Lord chose to bring it about in a different way and get a whole lot more people involved and it, that's just a blessing. I just love how the Lord works things like that out. Praise the Lord. So exciting things are happening there. And keep watching Faith and Victory on SpeakFaith.tv because we're going to keep tweaking the quality of the audio and, and getting it even better and better. And so stay tuned for that. Praise the Lord. Well, let's get into the Word of God. We're going to Romans chapter 16. We've been talking about uh, these folks here that last time we talked about women in the ministry because there's a long list here of folks that uh, Paul is greeting there at the church at Rome. But uh, we kind of got through that. <laughs> and I said we were headed somewhere. So this is where we're heading. Let's go to uh, verse 17, Romans 16, verse 17. Uh, this is going to be a whole different study than what we were on last time. But this is what this uh, the last one leads into. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Now, I beseech you, brethren. Beseech. I've, I've talked to you before about the word beseech. It's a very different word, a very unusual word. The word beseech here means to beg, to strongly beg. In other words, he is serious about this. He's saying, I beseech you, I beg you, brethren. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Now this is a strong thing he's talking about here. This is, and remember, a lot of people talk about Paul was, you know, he was the, the minister of grace, and he was gracious, and he was kind, and he wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about walking in love, and all of these things, and they're all true that Paul preached grace and that Paul walked in love and that all of, but look what Paul says here he says mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them now you know some people would say well Dr. Bill that doesn't sound like love you know it sounds like he's saying shun these people yeah <laughs> He's saying avoid them. Now, what does that word avoid mean? I'm kind of curious about that. Let's, let's see what the Greek mean, uh, meaning here is. It says to deviate, that is to shun. It's exactly what it seems like it is. To shun, literally or figuratively, or relatively to decline, to avoid, to go out of the way. In other words, to go out of the way from being around them. Well, what have these people done that, that makes you, that, that, that Paul says it puts you in a position you should shun them, avoid them, go out of your way to, to stay away from them? What are they doing? They are causing division, and they are preaching contrary to the doctrine that you have learned. 
Those are the two things. Now, the term here that's used for division means disunion. In other words, to no longer be in agreement, to be in dissension. And then, of course, we know the word doctrine means instruction. It means teaching. It simply means the instruction or teaching that you have learned. Well, what have we learned from the Scripture? What did Paul say he preached? Romans chapter 10. What did he say? He said, What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So Paul said out of his own mouth, I preach the word of faith. I am a word of faith preacher. So if we hear someone preaching something other than the word of faith and causing dissension and causing division and taking us away from the doctrine of the word of faith that we have learned, we should avoid them. Now I know a lot of folks are going to say, I know, Dr. Bill, I just... I don't know about avoiding them. I mean, uh, shouldn't we be trying to win them over to the correct teaching? Shouldn't we be uh, doubling our efforts to be around them so we can teach them the West? That's not what it says. It says to avoid them. Well, why avoid them? Because it can affect you. It can cause you to get into a state of division, divisiveness, disunion. See, that's, that's the problem. There are so many people that say, well, I'm going to go try to reach them. And their, their initial goal is sound, that they want to reach them, they want to win them back over to sound doctrine. All of those things sound good, but unfortunately, it can backfire. I've seen it happen time and time and time again. People say, well, I'm going to, tell you what, I'm going to leave this church, I'm going to go over to this church that's preaching false doctrine or preaching against the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This is where I've seen it more than anywhere else. They're preaching against the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and they go to that church and they sit there and they listen to the preacher rave and rant about how it's all of the devil and so forth. And you know what? The Word of God says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Well, fear cometh by hearing the Word of the devil. Amen. It's a reciprocal. It works both ways. And so you hear false doctrine, and you hear false doctrine, and you hear false doctrine, and it starts chipping away at that solid rock of revelation knowledge that's inside your spirit. And before too long, you end up getting deceived. And you fall right in with the crowd there that's teaching doubt and unbelief. I tell you, I've seen it, and I've seen it, and I've seen it. Well, what should you do, Dr. Bill? Avoid them. Well, that doesn't sound like the love of God. The love of God is to keep you sound and straight and on the word of God so that you can be an example to those people. See, they're, they're going to keep watching you. They're going to keep watching your life. They're going to keep, you know, the, you will be surprised how much they're watching what you say and what you do. And if you're just falling in with them, it's not going to be an example to them. It's going to be a confirmation that, yes, see, this doctrine is correct. When, in fact, it's false. Do you see what I'm saying? Mark them. Now, what does that term mean, mark them? You'd be very surprised <laughs> when I read it to you. It's scopeo in the, in the Greek. It is to take aim at, to regard to consider, to look at, and to mark. Now, to take aim at is almost like, <laughs> think about this, you've got a gun, and you're pointing it, and you're taking aim. Whoa. See, this is not just kind of a casual thing. This is a decision on your part to mark them as one who causes dissension as one who is teaching false doctrine. And then, once they are marked, you avoid them. <laughs> Excuse me. You avoid them. You don't stay around them. You certainly don't listen to their ministry. 
And the Word of God is very clear about this. I tell you what, let's do. Let's go over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I want to read a scripture there to you that just ties right in. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. We beseech you, brethren, here he goes, beseeching us again, strongly begging us. We beseech you, brethren, to know them that labor among you. Well, who are those that labor among you? Those are ministers, pastors, teachers, those that you listen to. Know them that labor among you and are over you in the Lord. In other words, they have responsibility for preaching and teaching and ministering to you on a regular basis. This is specific, uh, particularly true of those that are pastors. Your pastor is over you in terms of responsibility. Now, it's not a situation. There was a movement many years ago called the shepherding movement where you know, you couldn't buy a house, you couldn't buy a car, you couldn't do anything unless you went to your shepherd and said, what should I do? And then they would tell you, you do this, and they, okay, and then you go do whatever that is. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the person that God has placed in your life as the primary person that ministers the Word of God to you and is there for you if, if you know, <clears throat> somewhere it happened to you, end up in the hospital or whatever, they're going to be there at your bedside praying for you. You see what I'm saying? They're the person that is your pastor, your minister, that is the one who God will speak to, you know, and say, what about this guy? And he will give a report <laughs> on you. You want him giving a good report. I want my pastor to stand before the Lord and say, you know, I tell you one thing, Dr. Bill was faithful and he was supportive, and he was always there for me. And if people started speaking against me, he was the one there saying, not my pastor. <laughs> Amen. He, I want him to say supportive and kind things to the Lord about me. You know what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. So, we beseech you, brethren, know them that labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Did you know that one of the key things your pastor will do is admonish you. What does the word admonish mean? That's one of those good King James words. Well, it is the Greek word nutheteo, and it means to put in mind by implication to caution and to reprove gently. Now look at that. Put in mind by implication to caution and to reprove gently also means to warn. In other words, your pastor is the one that should be warning you, hold on, there's this squirrely doctrine going around the church. You know, because there's winds of doctrine. And your pastor will warn you, he will admonish you, he will caution you, reproving you gently. Now folks, stay away from this false doctrine. Okay? He'll caution you. Now, what does it say? This is the key part I wanted you to see. We beseech you to know them that labor among you. Remember, we, we talked about the guy who was teaching false doctrine. We said to mark him and avoid him. Well, on the other side of the spectrum, see, this guy over here is teaching false doctrine. You mark him, you avoid him. But over here on the other side of the spectrum, those that are over you in the Lord ministers of the gospel that, like your pastor, that are ministering to you on a regular basis, know them. In a way, you're marking them, but for good. I listen to that minister. I receive from him. You see the difference? You're, you know them, and you understand that they are over you in the Lord, and you want them to uh, give a good report concerning you. And there's a relationship there of, he is my pastor and I receive from him. But over here is the guy uh, teaching false doctrine. And to him, you mark him and you avoid him. That is the proper method of how you should be dealing with doctrine these days. You should be in a church 
with a pastor that you know them, you know their testimony, you know their stand on the Word of God. I'm telling you, my pastor, Ed Taylor, Faith and Victory Church, Greensboro, North Carolina, I know him. What, what does that mean? That means I know he stands for the Word of Faith. He went to Raymond Bible Training Center. He calls uh, Dr. Hagen, Kenneth E. Hagen, his father in the faith, Dad Hagen. Amen. And he listened to him. He received from him everything that Pastor Ed received from Brother Hagen. He holds dear to him. I know Pastor Ed is for me. I know that he has a heart, a pastor's heart of love toward me. And he has, in many occasions, he has cautioned me about certain things. I've given several testimonies right here on the program of how a uh, pastor said something from the pulpit. Now, he wasn't speaking to me directly, but it was by the Holy Ghost that he said, now, some of you out there are about to go do something at work, da-da-da-da, whatever, and he would say something, and he'd say, and you're going to lose your job over it. And I went, whoa, because I had purposed in my heart that Monday morning I was going to go in and give him a piece of my mind. And here is my pastor admonishing me, well, now, you're going to lose your job. You do that. You need to, you need to pull back here. Pray about this. I went, oh. <laughs> and I did. And you know what happened? The situation I was upset about got all straightened out supernaturally. Everything happened for my good, and I ended up getting a promotion. So I didn't lose my job. I got a promotion. Wow. See, that's the blessing of the Lord. Why? Because I listened to my pastor. I knew he was for me. I knew he was God's, so to speak, mouthpiece to speak into my life. And I received it, and I acted on it. And I didn't get all, you know, huffy and say, well, who's he think he is saying these things? No. I listened to him as the man of God and received from him. And it tremendously impacted my life and helped me in so many ways. And you know what? Another key thing about that is the Lord used him to speak that to me. I received it and acted on it. I got blessed because of it. And now I look back at that. Now think about this. That was a caution. It was a gentle caution. It was an admonishment. A lot of people don't like that. But I look back on that incident and say, wow, my pastor corrected me and it was a blessing. The Lord used him to speak to me and it was a blessing. I see it as a positive, not as a negative. I was going to make a mistake, but the Lord arrested me through my pastor. And I look back at that incident and go, wow, that is a, oh, that's a blessing. It's great to know that God's out there looking out for you. You know what I'm saying? There's a saying in the military, he's got my six. <laughs> you know, and that's their way of saying, he's got my backside. Well, you know, that is absolutely scriptural because the word of God says that the Holy Spirit will be our re reward, which is another one of those King James words that means he's got my backside. <laughs> he's got my six. Amen. Isn't that great? And you say, oh, Dr. Bill, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard, but it's scriptural. And you see what I'm saying about how that is such a blessing? I'd so much rather operate within this where I'm marking those who are preaching false doctrine and understand I'm not to go that way, but I'm also understanding that the Lord has placed someone in my life to speak to me and to admonish me and to correct me gently. You know, they don't have to rant and rail and, you know. No, they gently offer correction. And they're used by God to do that. Know them and stay with them. Bless them. Encourage them. Be there for them. They're a blessing in your life. But over here, mark them that preach false doctrine and avoid them. Do you see the difference? Two sides of the same coin. 
but very, very critical, very important that you understand who you're listening to, what they're teaching, where they're coming from, and receive from those that are preaching the Word of God and avoid, literally, avoid those that are preaching false doctrine. Wow. Amen. Can you see that? Well, that's what I wanted to share with you. I wanted you to see that because in these days, like I said at the beginning of the program, it's more critical than ever that people receive only from the Word of God and do not receive and avoid false doctrine. Amen? Amen. Well, I want you to write me, and I want to hear from you. I want to hear how the program is ministering to you. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, write me and let me know. My uh, regular address is Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 52135213, High Point, North Carolina, zip code 27262. And, of course, you can also write me in my email address. It's much faster to correspond by email, particularly if you have questions or comments or whatever. Just send me an email. I would love to hear from you that way as well. You can send me an email at drbill, D-R-B-I-L-L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. Of course, that stands for Word of Faith Ministries, W-O-F-M dot O-R-G, because we're a nonprofit organization. So I'd encourage you to write me and let me know what the program means to you. Praise the Lord. And uh, watch SpeakFaith.TV. Get a Roku device if you don't already have one, and subscribe to SpeakFaith.TV. It's really easy. All you have to do is go into the channel store and look us up under spirituality and religion category, or you can simply go to the Roku uh, website under your account and add the channel. And for the, the keyword there, just put in Speak Faith TV with no dot. So Speak Faith TV. I'll have it here on the screen, and you can enter it that way. Uh, or just put in SpeakFaith.TV on their channel search, and there's a place there you can click and subscribe there as well. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. I encourage you to do it, and uh, I really believe it will be a blessing for you to receive from all that we have on SpeakFaith.TV. Remember, until next time, to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.